section 4.1 is solving systems of linear equations. We have three possible solutions to each of these. The first solution is when you graph the two equations and they cross at this one point. When they cross at the point, the point that they have in common is going to be their solution. So it has one solution. It's consistent because it crosses or touches. And then it's independent. It has the answer of an x, y value. It has an ordered pair answer. Our second possible solution is one in which when I graph the first equation, then I graph the second equation, I see parallel lines, so there is no solution. They have no point in common. Inconsistent means they never cross or they never touch, and then they're independent. They're most of the time represented by that zero with the bar through it, which means no solution. Then there's the third type. When I graph an equation, and then I graph the second equation, and it's right on top of it. You can't see it because it's two on top of each other. They have many, many, many points in common. So the answer to this one is infinitely many solutions. They're consistent because they cross or touch. And they're dependent because they're right on top of each other. Sometimes the answer is given in this format, which this is set builder notation. And so now we'll look at some specific examples using solving systems of equations. OK, the first method they tell us to solve by graphing. Equation 1, it's not solved for y, so I need to do that. And equation 2, I need to stop and solve them for y. So that's what I'm going to start by doing, solve both of these equations for y. My first equation, when I solve for y, I get y equals 1 third x plus 2. My slope is 1 third. And my y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, and this is my b is 2, so it's the ordered pair 0, 2. I'm going to go ahead and graph that. You start at your y-intercept, 0, 2, which is here. And then we rise over run, so we're going to go up 1, right 3. So from there, you go up 1, right 1, 2, 3, up 1, right 3, and then we're going to graph a line through that. Then, in, then we're going to take our second equation, 3x minus 9y equals 9. We're going to solve it for y and do the same thing. So when I solve it for y, I get this slope-intercept formula. So now I'm going to name my slope of the red line as 1 third. My y-intercept is going to be the ordered pair 0, negative 1. So I start at 0, negative 1, which is here, and then I'm going to rise over run. So I'm going to go up one, right three. Up one, right one, two. Up one, right three. And then we're going to graph a line through it. So when we look at these, we want to know those are parallel lines if we graphed it correctly. Then we want to know where do they cross or touch. And they never do, so the solution to these two systems of equations is going to be no solution, which sometimes is represented with 0 with the bar through it. OK, now this method, we want to use elimination. So let's just think off to the side, first of all. If I have a 2x and I want to eliminate it, then I'm going to subtract 2x because when I add down, they eliminate each other, they cancel. So if I had negative 4x to eliminate that, I would have to use a positive 4x because um, one's positive, one's negative, and they're the same coefficient. So that idea we want to use, um, we have the freedom to either change our x values or to work with our y values, but we're going to focus on the x, OK? So on this one, I need to multiply, if that's a 6, I need to multiply this one by 4 because it's the bottom one. And I need to multiply this one by 6, and this needs to be negative. One needs to be positive, and one needs to be negative. So therefore, we're going to multiply this whole equation by it so that it eliminates. That is 24x minus 4y minus 20. This one's going to be minus 24x plus 12y minus 36. Now we're going to add down. When you add down, these cancel. 
and by ten, and then I get um, 12 minus 4 is going to be 8y and over here I get negative 56. If this first part, when we focused on our x values right there, if that did not cancel out then and eliminate, then I needed to start over because I probably made a mistake up here. So now we're solving for y. y equals negative 7. Once you find your y value, we need to find our x value. So you go back into either one of these original problems. So I'm going to use equation number 1. 6x minus y equals negative 5 and this time I'm going to substitute a negative 7 in place of y. So I have 6x minus but instead of y I'm going to substitute this value of negative 7 in right there. So I have 6x plus 7 equals negative 5 subtract 7 6x equals negative 12 and divide both sides by 6 to find out that x equals negative 2. So our ordered pair is going to be the solution negative 2, negative 7. It's one solution and it's going to be consistent and independent. The next equation, if I'm trying to make my x values eliminate, I'm going to multiply the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 3. I need one to be positive and one to be negative. So now we distribute 6x plus 8y equals 4. And on the bottom we get negative 6x minus 15y equals 3. And when we add down, we're now this eliminates, which means I did it correctly. I have negative 7y equals 7. Divide both sides by negative 7 and you get y equals negative 1. Now I go back into either one of my original, so I'm going to take the first one, 3x plus 4, but instead of y, I'm going to substitute the value in for y, which is negative 1, and then I'm going to solve. So 3x minus 4 equals 2, and I solve this out, and 3x equals 6. So x equals 2. I write it as an ordered pair and I'm careful to put my order, my x and y in the correct order. So this is one solution. They cross at the point to negative 1. It's consistent and independent.